What we're looking at here are, are Jerseys, one of the six major dairy breeds in the United States. The smallest of the six breeds also has the highest percent protein and butter fat in their milk. One of the, the reasons that I milk Jerseys is due to their stature. This is a barn that was built um, actually in the, probably the 1930s when actually Holsteins and all breeds of cows are a lot smaller. Over time, through genetic selection, we've actually selected for a much larger cow, so our facilities haven't grown, but our cow has. And uh, Holsteins don't fit in some of these old barns anymore, so that's where the jersey kind of fits in for me real well. They fit in the stalls that were built for smaller Holsteins several decades ago. The other couple things with jerseys, like I said, they're a smaller animal, so they eat less. They also have less manure, so for me, in my situation where I'm buying all my feed, I get less feed to buy, less feed to store. The other nice thing about a jersey is uh, they're very reproductively efficient. They uh, will have a calf much more frequently than the other dairy breeds. So those are a couple of the reasons that, uh, that I kind of chose to go with the, the, the jerseys. These animals are all registered. What it really does is it ensures a, a, a pure breed. We know the animal's parent. We can go back even further in, in her pedigree as far as uh, uh, grandparents and go back several generations. So by being registered, that's a, uh, a producer's way of, of guaranteeing that this animal is 100% what he or she says it is. Part of it's a pride thing, I guess, taking a little bit more pride in the animal. I like to know where they came from, who they are. I also get genetic evaluations on the animals, so I can use that in my mating decisions. All animals here are bred with artificial insemination for two different reasons. One is for uh, safety, not having a mature bull around, which can pose a safety hazard. Also a uh, genetic gain. I can use the, the top genetics in the country, if not the world, uh, through artificial insemination. I've got probably over 120 different choices as far as uh, Jersey Bulls I can use. I can select for the traits I'm, I'm looking for, whether they be confirmation traits or uh, production traits as far as milk and uh, protein, butter fat, or health traits as far as productive life, somatic cell, pregnancy rates, things of that nature. So I've got way more opportunity using artificial insemination to advance uh, my herd genetically versus using a, a herd sire or a bull. My cows are housed in a tie stall barn. Uh, what a tie stall barn is is where each individual cow has her own each individual stall where she's tied. Cows are bedded twice a day with uh, wheat straw. One of the paramount things with dairy cows is cow comfort, making sure that they're comfortable. A cow laying down will have 300% or three times more blood flowing through the udder than a cow standing. So a cow laying down is a, a way more productive animal. A cow that's milking approximately 100 pounds is doing the equivalent uh, of running a marathon each day. So when we start thinking about uh, cooling cows and keeping cows comfortable in the summertime, we always try to keep that in the back of our mind is, well, what would a marathon runner need, you know? In, uh, in 90 degree heat. What would a marathon runner need as far as nutrition? What would a marathon runner need as far as a good night's sleep? So keeping cows comfortable, you know, making sure they have good high quality feed in front of them, a good comfortable place to lay down and rest is just extremely important. The lactating cows, the milk cows are fed a TMR or total mixed ration. We take all of the, the ingredients in a cow's diet and mix them together into one mix. It's kind of like a, a toss salad. Some people might like carrots, some people might like radishes, some people might like lettuce. All the parts of the salad are important and uh, we want to make sure that all of them get into the animal. So we mix it all together and, and don't give them a choice to, uh, to select one or the other. Hay quality is extremely important in a, in a dairy diet. Forage can provide a lot of energy and a lot of protein. The higher the quality the, the forage or the hay, uh, the more energy, the more protein the animal is going to be able to get out of it. The more forage we can put into a cow, the less uh, purchase feed as far as corn, soybean meal, distillers, grains that have to go into the diet. Also uh, the healthier the cow we have. A cow is a ruminant and uh, what makes a cow so unique is her ability to digest fiber, digest cellulose. Like They can take a lot of uh, products that are inedible for humans and convert them into edible products as far as cheese, butter, yogurt, ice cream, milk, meat. So when you think of what a cow actually does, it's pretty amazing. This is our grain mix. It provides uh, pretty much everything that the forage component of the diet doesn't. This is composed mostly of uh, ground fine corn, distiller's grains from uh, the ethanol industry, soybean meal, and a couple other byproducts uh, as far as the mineral and vitamin that the cows need. The calves are raised in hutches from uh, birth up to about eight months. 
the thing about calves living in the hutches all year round is it's fresh air constantly. That's probably the biggest thing. Cattle and even calves can tolerate um, cold climate as long as they're clean and dry. Um, you know, when they're when they're first born, we make sure that they're dried off, and when it's and it's you know real cold out, they all get a jacket put on them. The isolation is to keep the calves from spreading disease from one animal to another. Uh, nose to nose contact is kind of how we refer to it. When calves are born, they have absolutely no immune system. They gain their immune system through the colostrum or the first milk from the cow. But after that, they have to slowly build that immune system up. So anything we can do to keep them from coming into contact with bugs or any kind of bacteria, viruses, is going to help us out in our, in our battle to keep our animals healthy. Once they leave the hutches, uh, they transition over here into group housing. Usually like to start them in small groups so they get acquainted with living with a roommate. Not unlike uh, people, you know, you, you got to get used to sharing space with somebody else. These girls here are about four months old. For this group of calves, they're still developing their stomach or their rumen. So we want an extremely digestible source of forage here. Um, so this is about the best hay I can find. Highly digestible, very high in protein, very high in energy. These girls are, are growing and growing quite rapidly, so they need, a, need to be on a very high plane of nutrition. Uh, these calves get a, a grain mix or this pelleted grain mix, which consists of uh, a lot of different actual byproducts that we, we're feeding cattle. We got ground fine corn, but there's also going to be some some distillers grains that comes from uh, the ethanol industry, soybean meal, which comes from uh, soybean processing. It's going to include all the, the vitamin and mineral that they need. This particular pellet, there's actually cereal fines, which come from a cereal company. When they make different brands of cereal, you don't want a whole bunch of crumbs in the bottom of your bag, so they screen it, and the screens actually have a lot of nutritional value so we uh, we use that and uh, kind of recycle it through cattle. The thing I like about dairying the most is it combines my two favorite subjects business and biology. We know a lot about how cows work and there's a lot we don't know about how cows work but we get to apply that biology and try to uh, maximize that to, to what we're trying to gain here as far as milk or reproduction or making milk components. Put on top of the, the biology is the business component can we utilize that biology to make a profit? I obviously enjoy working with animals. You know, I've been part of this animal's life actually probably since conception. To see it uh, come into the world, grow, uh, mature, and become a productive member of the herd is pretty neat.